Welcome everyone to a short public service announcement from the brave new storage world. Maybe you got your new shiny dual actuator high performance Seagate Exos 1418 or so or non dual actuator, even larger helium filled enterprise storage stuff to build your Linux enterprise business. And it doesn't work, right? You have uh, shiny latest and greatest bizarre RAID and host adapter stuff and all the matching cables of which there are many, right? Uh, just of course this is not this especially a oh, wait a second. I wanted to you want to see this in, in, in HD, right? SAT, uh, SAS cables, right? You're prepared, you have everything and then it doesn't even freaking work, right? I wasted so many hours on this nonsense. Um, and turns out there is a freaking new power disable feature where you were wondering what the freaking heck were they even freaking thinking? So because the stuff is didn't work, right? <laughs> I mean the card work, I spent hours on this stuff, right? I spent even more hours because of course I will make a dedicated video. Oh my god, is this managed rate, hardware managed rate stuff um, broken? Oh my god, I spent even more hours refreshing the bloody card to a dump mode because all the smart rate stuff is not so smart. But independently of all this storage nonsense, the power disable feature is a new industry standard featuring a feature defined for both SATA and SAS drives. This new feature feature allows the host system to perform hard reset to the hard drive HDD. The new feature can be found on new SAS, Ultra, Star, Seagate, uh, Exos and stuff beginning whatever. The new feature is optionally available on Ultrastar whatever. So what you need to know, the power disable feature introduces a new HDD management capability to electronically provide a hard power on reset to the HDD regardless of whether you implemented this feature. There are three important things you need to know. First it requires the Unix circuit board PCB on the SATA drive. Second if you want to put a new SATA HDD with the feature into a legacy chassis or freaking cable, the drive may not spin up. The HDD is not defective because like dead on arrival, right? Got shiny new drives, why do they not freaking power up? Third, if, uh, if you are a chassis vendor or developer, of course we all are, right? You should begin making the required changes. You should make the required changes for this amazing feature. So what does it do specifically? The chassis should support, also I can scroll this so that it's mostly on screen, should support a new definition of the pin 3. So wh what did they change, right? So for 20 or so years we had also, by the way, SATA and SAS, the connectors are mostly identical, right? Just so different more pins and, and stuff. Um, so we are talking, what are we talking about? You're talking about this freaking, I can also hear assistant camera. So we're talking about this freaking power connector. You all know, right, from it can probably theoretically focus right, ah, whatever, you know SATA connector. So we're talking about pin 3, right? So that is pin 3 there. Pin 3. Humble pin 3, right? So also, it's like what they were freaking thinking. We have we have thousands of, no, we, we have hundreds, hundreds, hundred millions. We have billions of cable out there and the SATA, SARS, T10 or whatever committee Let's change the definition of pin 3 after 20 years. What could possibly go wrong? Yay! So that is every, basically every IT person needs to know that because, I mean, I read a lot of stuff, right? I probably Google and read too many news. I probably would be more successful if I would not read, if I would not follow the latest and greatest development as much as I do. I followed so much, probably magnitudes more than normal people, and I did not know that, right? I got all those new stuff and was wondering why it doesn't even freaking work TM. I have no. So previously, SATA 3. Point, uh, which is so uh, pin 3, to p um, and not tie pin 3 to power. So, so specifically, the chassis or your freaking cable should support the new definition of pin 3 and not tie pin 3 to power. So previously, this was a power pin, right? This is why the new drives do not power up because. The normal regular cables have, I believe, 3.3 or whatever volt. They have supply voltage on this bloody pin, right? And 20 years later, they changed this or 
17 years later, whatever, they changed this pin to reset, right? To hard freaking, what do they call it? Disable, power disable, right? Also, I switched as a. Why? And it's absolutely crazy, right? Um, for new drives to support each uh, SATA model, yada yada, not official. So, um, there's some Vesta Digital, whatever. So, here's a lot of question and answer, right? So, uh, why would you want to use this feature? The power disable feature provides provides an easy way to power cycle. Also, like the one thing all the storage people ever ask, right? You have thousands of stuff in your server rigs and sometimes they crash, like maybe, maybe develop non-crashing hard drives. Easy way to power cycle a drive in order to perform a hard reset. That appears to be a very, very common, like stuff so unstable and broken, recurring hashtag peak bug that you need a 20 years later, we need a freaking power disable hard reset pin. What could possibly go wrong? Except hundreds of thousands of IT people wonder that their new drives don't spin up. Amazing. This can be useful if a drive locks up for some reason. It's like a pro tip. Don't ship drives with bugs in the firmware. It can't be that difficult. It's just it's like not that difficult. Famous lost words. And you don't want to send a technician to the physical rack and manually unplug the drive. And then plug it back in, in order to power cycle the drive. <laughs> we have a dedicated scene for this and this looks like this. Why would you want this feature on SATA? Since many SATA storage devices are deployed in storage systems that use SaaS backplanes, this SATA feature is compatible with SaaS implementations and will work properly when used in a SaaS backplane to support this feature. So, so far so good, yada yada, a lot of stuff. Uh, um, if I'm using SaaS, should I be concerned? Using SATA, should I be concerned? Uh, of course, like everything is fine, yada yada. So what's the solution, right? Other people, are we the first to discover this? No, we are the last to discover this because I simply didn't have ZAS drives until now, right? And that is a relatively newest feature. So of course, other people have discovered this. I just want to save you hours. I wasted probably three hours on this bullshit, right? Because it didn't work. Then you, you get a second controller, you get a second cable. Why do I have two cables here? I have here two cables here because I thought the bloody cable is defect. And then I googled, because there are so many, why did I waste three hours on this stuff combined? Because then I also thought, like, am I even using the, the right cable? Because turns out there are actually a bunch of uh, SAR things, right? Uh, SFF 84, 82, 80, 82, 84, 30, uh, 50, uh, 54, 43 and stuff. And then I googled all the pin out, like obviously this uh, SARS and SATA are mostly compatible except one pin more for uh, more serial, uh, serial data lines and so on. And it also doesn't help that a lot of these cables are sold with SATA in the name. Then you start to wonder like, is it a SATA only cable or does it support SARS and stuff? And of course shit doesn't work until like, and also I have an open power, I tie an open power thing. I mean, the drive worked and I mean, thankfully I have more than one. And then I was wondering, hey, at least the drive works because it works in the tie an open port chassis. I, I just wanted a second setup on x86 on my test bench here. Um, thankfully, at least I could cross test a little bit with an open power tie-in board here. It's like 2023, you need some IBM good old fashioned open power eight goodness to cross test some stuff. Um, yeah, so the cables are all listed with Sator, with eight uh, SARS and, and stuff like uh, all the listings are confusing. And on Amazon and other such retailers, the reviews have many one star, shit doesn't freaking work. It's like, yeah, <laughs> I wonder how that is. Why shit doesn't work? Power disable feature. Yay. So how to fix it? Um, there are two fixes. One thing is also like your mileage may vary. I don't we are not your warranty, right? Void your warranty alone. So you can either, um, what sometimes work, but I would probably not usually recommend, is you can, with a sharp 
uh, knife or Dremel or soldering iron, you can scratch also, what do I even show you? You can scratch off this pin there, right? Um, with your office supply scissors, which I probably would not normally recommend also. So that is a relatively easy fix, right? Mind you, Google this stuff, double check um, and measure and whatnot. Um, also, they say some adapters might wire them all together and you can potentially maybe not easily scratch one of those away. I have not tried this though, so your mileage may vary. The other thing is simply um, you can open this connector, right? Here, open this plastic clips and remove this 3.3 volt data line from the separate the 3.3 volt wire, which may or may not work. Your mileage may vary. Leave in the comments below what you tried. So it's basically why we can't have nice things, right? Um, and multiply this with over 20 years in my career. So often I waste hours researching stupid bullshit because some committee thought after 10 or 20 years, it's like, let's, let's reuse some power pin. I am speechless. Of course, I send all the argument, right? Sending technicians physically to your, to your storage rack is expensive, but I would rather, um, I mean, I would not have done this. I mean, it is exactly what, what you would think, right? Ten thousands of people, administrators and storage people worldwide waste time. This is nonsense. And each and everyone probably once unpacks something, plugs it in and that doesn't work. I'm sure it's an easy thing. Now I know it, right? After wasting three hours on this bullshit, now I know it. And when you know it, it's, it's obviously easy. Then, then it's not common knowledge. It's like, yeah, it was not. Although I read too many news sites, I followed too much new Linux kernel mailing lists and whatnot and in the industry. I have not realized this, right? And how should normal people realize? Sure, maybe if you're a specialized storage storage specialist, of course you know that. I mean, you because you probably once encountered this or a colleague told you. So I told you, right? That kind of stuff can happen. And also for other stuff, right? If you, who knows where similar such stuff is lurking, right? Leave in the comments below. Where have you wasted hours with reassigned pins for hard reset power disable things. Oh, and by the way, another, so not only I researched for hours, pins, connectors, diagrams and stuff, and this did not come up, right? I mean, if you're not using the right search term so much to AI, like obviously Google search is not AI. I mean, a proper AI would told you, hey, you Google all those pins and stuff. Maybe your stuff isn't working because it's like, yeah, thank you very much. So much to the difference between human knowledge and some AI machine learning giving you some half a decent search results. The other thing why I thought this might be not working because I tested because I don't have so many SAS drives here. I'm just building out our data data center, right? You need to start with something with your increasingly business and enterprise ready Linux distribution, which probably I should shout out, right? Obviously what you want to run in your data center. And I tested this because I only currently have two of these new SAS drives, not, not that cheap. Um, I had SATA drives on there too, right? And what I also didn't know is then after after the first two hours of testing, I read, I thought like, actually I have another card, right? I have two cards. Um, so this is a single port card. I also have a dual port card, which is now in the open power time, um, IBM power, power PC machine. And only then, I mean, those SaaS controllers usually are SATA backward compatible. And then after two hours messing with this stuff, because I had also some SATA SSDs and uh, drives on there for testing, obviously I wanted to build some storage array for testing. And then after Googling for two hours, I also noticed the information that mixing SAS and SATA drives is not commonly supported, right? So like two hours later, and then you thought, oh, maybe it doesn't work because I mixed SATA and SAS drives, but no, it, it was not that. But another pro tip, mixing SAS and SATA drives on one controller is implementation defined. It may work on some controllers, it may not work on others. I personally would have thought it should work, but maybe because the voltages are higher, right? The signaling voltages, voltages of SAS are like a nearly a volt higher. So of, yeah, 400, 400 to 600 millivolt versus uh, 200, 70, uh, 
fast uses higher signaling voltages, 800 to 800 to 1.6 milli, um, 0 0.8 to 1.6 volt, and uh, 275 to uh, 1600 for receive, and SATA is using 400 to 600 for transmit, and 325 to 600 to receive. And this is one thing why they're also physically not necessarily compatible. And maybe the reason that on most SAS controllers you can't mix it, maybe they have only one voltage uh, to uh, one main supply voltage for the controller and it might switch the whole port. Like, I'm only guessing, right? I'm only becoming a SAS storage expert here. <laughs> one failing power enable at a time. But yeah. And that is all the stuff, right? You Google, it could be this, no, it wasn't. You Google, it could be this, no, it wasn't. You Google, it could be this. You, you already want to put it, put it into the shelves. You go back to your open power. You have one last Google and it's like, oh, SAS power disable. Yay, that's, that's an amazing feature. That's it for today. And also, this is why we can't have nice things, right? We can't have nice things why every year stuff breaks, right? And if it doesn't, if it doesn't uh, lock up, here to how does it do how do they professionally call it? Um, locks up for some reason. So if if your hardware doesn't lock up for some reason, then it it might be some new power disable feature that's preventing it from working. Yeah, that's why we can't have nice things, right? Why we break each other's stuff if we don't break software like CPUs and and other like software like CPUs, like microcode, like speculation, if you don't have broken CPUs or bro break each other's software with API and ABI changes, then either the hardware locks up or has new incompatible power disable features. I rest my case. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something and also apply this to other stuff, right? If some, some new part doesn't work in your car repair or your aircon repair, then it might be some new power disable line. So better double check all the pinouts and measure and cross reference. Have a good day or night. I have some storage to build now and see you next time for more new power disable reassigned pin features. Oh, and leave, leave in the comments below. Did you know that? Do you have other such things where they reassign pins? And what, what were your favorite incompatible hardware features you ever encountered.